Throne and Liberty has taken many shapes since it was first announced. A top down isometric MMO under the title Lineage Eternal that had been in development since 2011, Lineage 3, Project TL after the poor reception they'd received during internal test phases. And finally, in March 2022, NCSoft revealed to the world Throne and Liberty. Accompanied by an incredible trailer, players were excited. This could be the next Lineage, the next Ion, the next Blade and Soul. Okay, well, maybe not the next Blade and Soul. Blade and Soul had certain assets, personality, that allowed for a degree of separation from most other MMOs. Terra had that too. Throne and Liberty was sold to us as this gorgeous, enormous open world action packed PvPVE MMO. And then the betas came, and what we saw had us a little bit more concerned. Autoplay, large grinds, very subpar graphics, but this is what we'd come to expect of the genre. Grandiose ideas, broken promises, and unparalleled disappointment. NCSoft promised us that they were listening, however, and they have made numerous alterations since, which we'll touch on over the course of this video, including the release date, additional beta tests, and more. Throne and Liberty is not going to appeal to everyone, just like neither Final Fantasy XIV nor World of Warcraft do. And if you feel that this is the case for you, I urge you to check out a video that we did recently where we list over 50 confirmed MMOs, no blockchain, no NFTs, that are all confirmed to be releasing in the next few years. Otherwise, let's continue. Did you know that Throne and Liberty was going to have a functional gacha system? Oh yeah. After seeing the success of gacha in other games and other genres, how could you not want to implement it? Blue Protocol has a gotcha for cosmetics, same with PSO2 and PSO2 New Genesis. Tower Fantasy has a gotcha for weapons. Slowly, gotcha is becoming more prevalent, just like it did with mobile games. While it's still probably a ways off before it becomes mainstream in MMOs, it is nevertheless worth noting that it was at one stage going to exist within Throne and Liberty, and thankfully, NCSoft opted against this. As noted, while Korean players were more accepting of gacha, Western players were more positively receptive of a seasonal pass, which is the direction that we're going. On November 2nd, NCSoft had a large live stream in anticipation of the game's Korean release, which included quite a sizable amount of information. Let's recap, beginning with the release date, as I believe that's probably one of the most noteworthy bits of information released. Before we do though, allow me to take a moment here to thank our incredible patrons over on Patreon who allow for me to continue to do videos like this every week. I truly appreciate it. Now, let's get on to that recap. NCSoft confirmed Throne and Liberty would be releasing on December 7th, 2023. This confirmation was made during a Korean live stream by NCSoft themselves. This was not made in an English live stream by Amazon Game Studios. There have been a number of threads made on Reddit and rumors spread throughout social media that this release is pertaining to the global version of the game as well, when neither NC nor Amazon have confirmed that. If Amazon were to be releasing the game next month, they would have announced it themselves. On the contrary, Amazon still lists a release date for Throne and Liberty as 2024. With this in mind, it's a safe bet to assume December 7 is pertaining to the Korean release and not global. And the term global here doesn't really mean global as there are still regions that will not have access to it. The cash shop will feature two types of battle passes, the growth pass and battle pass. There will be skins that provide no statistical benefits, transformation items akin to what we've seen in Ion I'd expect, and pets that do in fact provide statistical benefits. Whether those pets are also obtainable in game or will provide higher stats than pets that are remains to be seen, but this is definitely hinting towards a potential form of pay to win. Throne and Liberty was advertised as an action MMO for many years, during its Lineage Eternal days, Project TL days, and even finalizing its Throne and Liberty identity. However, it recently came out that the game would feature a tab target combat system, which I know is going to upset quite a lot of players that believe action MMOs are just better, harder, when the reality is the most popular MMOs that exist right now provide evidence to the contrary. The devs elaborated on this, stating that they wanted to focus on build and skill strategy instead of aiming abilities, which makes sense. Many of us MMO players don't have the reflexes that we had a decade ago. They also confirmed the change to the UI, which was a very common complaint during beta testing. Many players thought that it looked like a mobile game, they themselves even stating that this was the case. Throne and Liberty was built around auto hunting, large numbers of monsters to kill, large numbers of items to loot, this is the foundation of the game, with the devs confirming that it would take roughly a year of playing 1-2 to two hours per day, 7 days a week, to reach max level. All of this has been altered, however, with autoplay mostly removed, and XP required to level reduced to one tenth of what it once was, allowing you to hit max level within roughly a month. However, from what I've seen of other players during the beta, 
While auto hunting was removed, the reason for auto hunting was still present, meaning that you were still required to grind, just manually, instead of setting it to auto and actually playing something fun. I guess we'll see if this works out or not. There are going to be two types of raids present, PvE and PvPvE. PvPvE will reside in the open world, field boss raids and arc bosses fall into this category, where guild raids are a prime example of PvE specific raids. Drops from guild raids cannot be sold on the market or traded to other players and are instead bound to your character. Throne and Liberty was originally going to be playable on mobile as well, but after the beta, the team decided to scrap mobile functionality in its entirety based off of the critical negative reception from both Korean and Western players, reiterating their decision to focus on PC. This honestly could have been where the focus on auto hunting came from. NCSoft have stated that they plan on rolling out three major updates per year. There are two major updates planned after launch, including the new region called Talandre, three to four months after release, the second called Draco Rift, featuring a new species called the Dragonkin. Dungeons will be a little different to what we're used to. On the one hand, they absolutely require a group to complete. These are not at all targeted towards single or duo play. They're also referred to as field dungeons with seamless access granted whenever you enter the area of the map. There are absolutely no restrictions present when running dungeons, including level restrictions, meaning that you could run an endgame dungeon at level 1 or a tutorial dungeon at max level with seemingly no scaling whatsoever. I can already foresee thousands of people selling carries for 50 bucks a pop. I can also see a large discrepancy in terms of power between new and veteran players, including a lot of instances of elitism. Weather will also play a major part in dungeon access, which is kind of interesting. An example was given, certain dungeons will only be accessible during rainy weather, which means if you're looking to run the dungeon and it's sunny, you kind of just sit there and hope that it rains soon. They did confirm the inclusion of instance dungeons as well, but these will feature objectives, kind of reminiscent to Mythic Plus dungeons and WoW. Weapons can be combined to create what the dev team states will be 21 unique class archetypes. This will add additional layers to class identity as players will be able to create our own builds that work with our specific playstyle. This was further elaborated on by stating that there are no classes present in-game, rather players will choose which weapons they want to use and build from there. And that was everything covered, a lot of changes have been made some for the better, some for the worse. Amazon are still preparing for their global release alongside Blue Protocol, since no matter what happens, these two games are going to coincide with and likely inhibit the success of one another releasing in too close a proximity. I'm curious to see if anything else will change in the global version before it releases, after public beta tests are held, but only time will tell. If Throne and Liberty, however, is not of any interest to you, then absolutely no problem. Consider checking out one of the two videos on screen right now. They might go a ways to satiating you instead.